Good morning. Welcome to our NC Career Connection Speaker Series, the partnership between I Work NC Virtual and NCBCE. Today, we're glad to welcome Ms. Jade Manley. She's a native of Raleigh, North Carolina, and she joined the NC Works Commission in February 2019, and this is the North Carolina Governor's Workforce Development Board. She's the director of the Local Innovation Committee, and she supports the commission by overseeing the NC Works Local Innovation Fund and highlighting best practices as the content creator of the commission spotlight on local workforce innovation series. Her additional duties includes conducting research and program evaluations related to workforce development. Prior to joining this commission, Jade served as the Internal Policy Coordinator and Board of Directors Liaison for the North Carolina Department of Transportation. While at NCDOT, she led efforts of policy standardization by conducting trainings and implementing an internal policy process across the department. She works closely with each of the four boards under the department, aiding in long range planning, board policy and strategy support while providing data analysis on departmental projects. She has a bachelor's degree in political science from Winston-Salem State University and a master of public administration degree from North Carolina Central University. She's also certified as a Lean Six Sigma Yellow Belt. So Ms. Manley, we're so excited to have you and I'm gonna stop sharing and let you share with us. Perfect, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, can everybody see my screen before I begin? I'm gonna take that as a yes. No, no. Uh, it's not showing. You might have to reshare. Okay, let me escape. That looks good, you're good to go. All right, perfect. Okay, so again, thank you all for the opportunity. I am Jade Manley. I serve with the NC Works Commission and I oversee the Local Innovation Committee. This is just an outline of what I plan to talk about today. Okay, so a little bit about me. I am Jade Manley. I work for the NC Works Commission, which is the Governor's Workforce Development Board. My primary position is overseeing local innovation for the commission, leading committee related functions centered around local workforce innovation, working with leaders across the state and identifying these local innovations, brainstorming ways to advocate, as well as spotlighting these innovations for publication and possible replication across the state. And so how did I get here? Um, as previously mentioned, I am a native of Raleigh, North Carolina. I graduated from Sanderson High School, go Spartans. <laughs> After graduating high school, I went on to attend Winston-Salem State University, where I majored in political science. Um, I chose to major in political science simply because I knew that I was interested in government. Um, and at first, I did have the idea that I wanted to go to school. However, um, being a political science major, you are offered with a range of options. Um, you're introduced to public administration as well as law courses. And it was in those law courses, such as criminal justice and constitutional law, that I realized being a lawyer was not my passion. Um, and so from that experience, I did know, however, that I wanted to be involved into the public sector. And so during my senior year, um, I applied to many jobs and internships and was ultimately offered an internship with the North Carolina Department of Transportation as a policy intern. I accepted that internship and started three weeks after graduating college. So I was very excited about this new opportunity. This opportunity is really where I learned a lot about state government, the public sector, and this really ignited my passion for becoming a public administrator. After working as an intern for the summer, they offered me a full-time position and I accepted. After two years at the department, I did decide to go get my master's degree at North Carolina Central University. Um, and I obtained my master's degree in public administration, which this um, concentration or field really trains students to become leaders in the public sector. And so while obtaining the second degree, I was offered an opportunity to work for the Department of Commerce, which is where I currently am. 
Um, and actually the position that I was offered, they actually prefer a candidate with a master's degree. However, they knew that I was in the process of, it, obta of obtaining mine. Um, and so they offered me the position anyway. And so in May of this year, I actually completed my MPA degree. Um, and it's just an additional a few things about me is I am a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, as well as a Lean Six Sigma Yellow Belt practitioner. And so what this means is this is just um, a process improvement certification. And so about my field of work, uh, technically I am considered a research analyst. Um, and so the average salary for an entry level research analyst is about 56,000 a year. You will need a bachelor's degree in the social science field. Um, such as psychology, sociology, or political science, even economics. Um, and work experience that is required is about two years of some type of experience in planning, organizing, um, or evaluating social science, research for behavior, economic, educational, public health, or public policy, and other related areas. On the job training is provided. Um, however, you will need some type of training um, in like Microsoft Word or Excel um, and professional development is also provided. And so primarily the work of research analysts in the public sector in my role is to support and develop or evaluate public programs and policies to make things better for the public. And so ultimately this is really what I enjoy most is being able to make things better for the citizens of North Carolina. And so what is required? As um, stated previously, a bachelor's degree is required to do this kind of work. If you are looking to advance, I would highly recommend to anyone that you look in obtaining your MPA degree. Um, some courses that may help you in this career pathway while in high school could include core courses such as civics and economics, English and math, in addition to technology electives such as Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and project management. And I would strongly recommend any writing electives such as advanced research, argument theory, practice, and speech. And so additional work experience, job shadowing, or volunteer opportunities, some clubs that I would consider joining if you are in high school is the Idea Club, the Key Club, or Student Government Association. And so each of the clubs are a type of service club. Um, and I will say being, being in the public sector, you are considered a public servant. And so you are there serving the people of North Carolina or whatever city you may work for. And so I believe any of these clubs could be beneficial. Student Government Association or SGA teaches you a lot about the inner workings of government from how meetings are conducted to the different leadership positions that people can hold. So I believe that this could be beneficial as well and I was involved in SGA. Um, and work experience to consider the North Carolina Governor's PAGE program. Um, this really allows you to gain government experience for about a week with students all over North Carolina. Um, as well as the U.S. Senate Youth Program, which allows you to represent North Carolina in a public administrator capacity um, and allow, allow you to really learn the inner workings of government at the federal level. And so I believe both programs could be extremely um, beneficial and they both are competitive. I um, was not a part of any of these programs. However, I have close friends that were and my older sister was a part of the Governor's Page Program. And so personal advice and experience. Um, so what advice I would give to students and or adults going into this career um, is to really network. Don't be scared to introduce yourself. You are a walking brand. Um, from how you enter a room to how you carry yourself, People talk and the more that individuals talk about the good in you, the more people will wanna work with you because they've had pleasant experiences with you. I will also say that yes, you are a brand, so market yourself accordingly. And this also includes social media. Companies, agencies, organizations look at that. So I would really advise you to brand yourself accordingly if you know that this is the type of work that you wanna go into. I would also advise you to stay focused. Find someone who can mentor you to hold you accountable. Um, let them know your plans. I will say most successful people have had at least one person in their life to help guide them. I know I have. Um, she was my boss at uh, the North Carolina Department of Transportation and she is still my mentor today. And I'm very fortunate to have her in my life. So if you had the opportunity to have a mentor, I would strongly recommend getting one. 
I would also say focus on your soft skills, time management. Um, you really have to learn how to prioritize because at least in the public sector, many things can come on your plate at one time and you really have to figure out, okay, what, what is priority right now? What do I need to work on? What, what is my end goal here? I will say confidence is key as well as teamwork. I will say 50% of the work that I do is in a team environment. So being able to work on a team is very important as well as having a positive attitude. Um, like I said before, people talk. And so the more pleasant experiences people have had with you, the more likely they are to recommend people to work with you, as well as communication. I will say right now, especially in COVID-19, communication is key because everything is virtual. So how you choose to talk with people is important. Um, as well as sharpening your technical skills. So that writing, um, your computer skills, Microsoft Office, any math, um, those are really, really important. I know for me, I use Excel, Word, and PowerPoint all day, every day. And so if you can really hone in on those skills and sharpen those, you will be an asset in the public sector. Um, as well as writing, I do technical reports, policy statements. And so if you can really focus on your writing and strengthening that, you will be an asset as well as math. You analyze data as a research analyst. So you really have to understand math in order to analyze the data and the numbers that are in front of you. I would also recommend taking a speech class, getting comfortable talking to people because um, presenting is one part of being a research analyst. The more comfortable you are, the better you can get your point across if there's some type of um, recommendation that you wanna offer based upon your research. I would also strongly recommend working on email etiquette. It is very easy, especially in this time period to slip into texting type communication. And so I would really strongly encourage you to get out of that habit and establish some type of writing style when you are corresponding in a business setting. Email etiquette is, is extremely beneficial. And so a list of helpful resources. Um, what I would tell students looking to prepare for interviews in the job market or even college and scholarship opportunities would be to connect with your local workforce development board. They are here to help you in these areas, as well as your school's guidance counselors or career and technical education department. This is what they are here for. I would also encourage students to look at ncareers.org. This is a great tool to compare different jobs and to see what education is required to the median salary in your area. Um, it is certainly a tool that I wish I had growing up if I was able to compare different careers um, and to see what is needed um, if you know I'm trying to compare where I wanna go or what I wanna do. And so that is really all that I have on me and I will take any questions. Miss Manley, you have given the students such wonderful advice about email etiquette and just writing skills, the math involved and how they're using all these core skills. Could you maybe speak to them a little bit about some volunteer opportunities besides the PAGE program? What some things they might be able to do even in COVID-19 times to help them hone their volunteer skills and get some service hours in a public policy type situation? Um, definitely. I would say, I, or I would strongly um, encourage students to reach out to their local municipalities that they live in. Um, help is definitely wanted. And I'm sure if um, an opportunity came where a student wanted to shadow or at least ask questions or just get some extra experience in filing or looking at different files and documents, they would definitely be open to that. Um, I definitely know for us, we would be. Um, a lot of the internships um, are for more so college age students, but I definitely think um, that help is needed anywhere. So if you were to reach out to your um, local municipalities, your state agencies, wherever it may be that you have interest in, I can certainly say that we would probably make space for you if you wanted to learn some of the inner workings um, or just shadow somebody to see what they do. And even in COVID, I mean, 
there are virtual platforms like Microsoft Teams, Zoom that, we're, that we are using um, that can definitely be utilized in this time. I will say that I got the chance to write a spotlight on um, the City of Charlotte's Mayor Youth Employment Program, which they really have turned their program around and how they provide virtual services to students still looking for some type of job experience. Some is in a volunteer capacity, some is actually in an employment capacity. Um, but I know we at the state are looking at what they're doing and like, okay, so how can we kind of implement what they're doing um, at the state level, or at least in, within commerce to accommodate students because volunteer opportunities as well as job experience is what is needed to propel them to the next level. Thank you for that additional advice because it is so important for them to reach out and find those networks and thank you for providing this information where they can get some of that help. No problem, no problem. I think it's really imperative in this time to step out of your comfort zone. Um, and really make those connections and communicate. Because I think, especially in a time where social media has kind of taken over and people can kind of hide behind um, their phones or their screens, I, I think going the extra mile and reaching out will make students stand out. Um, at least to me, it would. Yes, I think that shows even when you do your college essays, your application essays, when you step out of your comfort zone. And I think that's what additional education opportunities are if they can learn how to do that. That's a wonderful point that you make for them to see what they can do. Do you have any thoughts about how they can build networks? What's some other ways that they can find people and say I'm interested in doing public policy and like you said, being a lawyer wasn't what you wanted to do, but could you highlight some other opportunities for them in the public arena here? Um, definitely. I would, let's see, I'm trying to think back more into a, a high school setting. I at least know for me as a student, I really leaned on my um, career development services department, which I, I will say that's really where I was able to make those connections within different um, departments or agencies and talk with people um, or I would even if you attend um, church or know other people I would just really look to see who within your current network might know somebody that knows somebody because that's really how um, your network can grow is when you just start having those conversations whether it be with family members whether it be with your um, parents co-workers whatever it may be that's really when your network expands and you realize it who you need to talk to is just a few people away. Um, and so I would just really encourage students to talk with a range of different people currently in their network um, to see who might be in those positions or key areas that they want to get and that they can already talk to that's just a few people away. I mean, or emailing people. I myself have found myself emailing a few different people if I want to learn about different things just by seeing their names listed on a staff directory and they've been more than accommodating than talk to me. So that, that's another avenue that I would advise students to look at is, you know, look on the staff directory, start communicating and talking with different people. If you find that within your current network, um, those individuals don't have the tools or resources that might can help you in that moment in time. That's some more great advice because we never know those outreaches, what they might provide even now and down the road for us. So that networking is such a viable part of what we do as we reach out towards our career and jobs. So thank you. Absolutely. Have you found any surprises in what you do in this position that you're in right now, especially with COVID-19? I know it's really changed the way the workforce does things. So have, what changes have you seen and adaptations have you had to make in this different career? 
Um, definitely. I will say, I think COVID-19 was the ultimate surprise for everybody. Um, I know for me working for um, the Governor's Workforce Development Board, and I worked for four different boards at DOT, all of them do their business primarily public facing or in a face-to-face -face meeting format. And so really trying to find ways to be creative in this time, um, I think has been the ultimate challenge, but it's of course something that we're currently overcoming. And so um, typically we would meet in person four times a year or quarterly by general statute for my current commission. And so just really trying to find ways to be innovative and in communicating with them um, because that face-to-face -face time was really important for us. We were able to talk about a range of different things as well as um, business type things. And so just finding innovative ways to talk with them. I really think COVID has taught everybody how to be um, creative. And so um, of course it's created a challenge or barrier, but um, being able to connect virtually has definitely served as our solution currently. Um, we're able to meet the need for the time being and business is still being conducted, but I definitely think that has thrown a wrench into what we're accustomed to. Wonderful point. And I think just being able to think outside the box and independent thinking is another important skill set for us all to have because we never know what's going to be thrown our way. So we have to be able to have those thinking skills to help us rise above it. So thank you for those points. Definitely. And I think it allows you to be more flexible too. And I think being at least in the public sector, you have to be flexible because um, to see something from start to finish, as far as you doing research on something, you recommending a change, and then it being implemented, it takes time in the public sector. And so I think COVID-19 has just reinforced the need to be flexible, at least for me and my department. Yes, that's very true. Flexibility is a good skill set for us all to have because we never know what a day will bring. There's a couple of comments in the chat I want to point out to you. Okay. This one says email etiquette is a vital and good point about NC career side. I wish I had this too. And I know I speak to my students about formal and informal writing because I think when you get in the habit of lowercase size, the U for yes. while you, it's just very easy for us to slip into that when we're doing formal writing. So what tips would you give students for working on these writing skills when they're doing this email etiquette? Is there a side or do you have some particular tools that you use to help you with this? I know for me, um, and especially with working from home and having the chat feature on Microsoft Teams that we utilize, um, it of course can be easy to slip back into that texting or non-formal um, etiquette. And so I think for me personally is I try to, well, I have emails every day that of course I send, but aside from that, I try to at least focused on just a little bit of writing, whether it's just me writing about something random or something work related, I just really try to find time each day to increase my writing abilities and skills, um, because I know that can kind of get lost within this time, especially in a virtual um, setting or format, or even I will um, challenge students if they find time to email somebody back um, as far as having to ship a return back to Amazon or just any any random correspondence they may have in email, whether it be with a business, I would just challenge them to really, really utilize that time in, um, in enhancing that formal etiquette. Because um, once it becomes a habit, it, it, it just becomes easier and easier. And I will say for me, um, even talking with your parents and seeing how they, their writing styles are within a business format. Because I know for me, I really looked at my mom's writing style and I really liked how she wrote in emails. And so that in return, it's like, okay, I wanna take some of what she has and even communicating with my boss is I wanna take some of what they have and kind of make it my own. And so 
I think, again, utilizing your network and your resources around you and just seeing how other people are communicating and really focusing on how, okay, well, what is Jade's writing style? How does Jade want to communicate or convey herself in a business format, I think is important. And so, especially in this time where things are virtual, I would just really lean on your network, look at their writing styles and just put aside a time, whether it be once a week or twice a week, to just focus on those skills and sharpen them up because I tell you how you email is very important and that can open the doors for many different things. That is such great advice because I know even for myself when I'm not doing some type of formal education, sometimes I fall back into some bad writing habits <laughs> and just uh, learning that we all are suspect to that if we're not careful and it is an important part of what we do in our professional life as well as our personal life because we know that emails can also be misconstrued for time so I just think that that's a very important skill and I'm so glad that you brought that out. We do have another comment here about the networking, and it says, yes, who you know is so important. Can you make any suggestions for books that students should read that you found helpful? Oh, man, books. This is a tough one. Um, most recently, I think for me as a public administrator, um, some books that I have found important, they don't really lend themselves um, to networking per se, but I know for me, at least in the state of North Carolina, there is a book that I read, it's called Facing Poverty in North Carolina, and I think that really sheds light um, as to really what has happened in North Carolina, and yes, we have come a long way, but we still have a long way to go, and so I think um, that particular book has kept me motivated and to know that my job is just beginning um, and the passion has not died and, you know, being a public administrator is really where my heart is, is just to make things better for the next generation and the generations to come. Um, so that to me that book really focused and it I mean it was North Carolina based and so that kind of touched my heart as well because I can relate to different things I have families in different counties that they spoke about um, and so that for me really shed light on a lot of different things and um, for me wanted me to keep me here in North Carolina because I think also a lot of times students may go off to college or have ideas um, and there's been opportunities for me to go out of state whether it be to DC or New York um, but I think my purpose is here in North Carolina we have a saying where it's like you know we want to teach them here to keep them here um, and so that book really I think refocus me and to let me know that you know my purpose is here in North Carolina as a public administrator so I, I hope that answered the comment but that was really one book that kind of touched me recently. Wow I think that is something we all should really think about because there are such needs for public policy and public policy jobs because the underserved is an important part of our society and I think sometimes we forget about that when we're not in those situations so I love that you brought up this point and that just brings me to another point what personal qualities characteristics skills or attributes do you think is needful for someone that goes into the public policy profession Okay, I definitely will go back to being flexible. Um, it is hard sometimes to see the light at the end of the tunnel when you get on these projects or you do some type of research um, and you present on your recommendations or you know things that can happen or service solutions to overcome these challenges or problems. And it takes many, many years for them to be implemented or for you to really see a return on investment or the change really occurring. And so just being flexible um, and dedicated, I think to seeing it through and knowing that you know change doesn't happen overnight. Um, but if you stay committed to the cause, it you know you're you're making things better for the next generation, as I stated previously, and really just being a team player. I cannot emphasize that enough. Um, you never know who you might need, um, and so really utilizing those relationships, um, ensuring that you are indeed being a team player. You are holding 
your end of the bargain or you're holding your weight on that team and doing what you are supposed to do, I think makes things a lot smoother in the workplace. Um, and so I will definitely say that those three things, flexible, um, being dedicated and being a team player all matter. That's great advice for any career opportunity. A lot of our students right now are doing college essays, scholarship applications. What advice, I know you talked about the communication skills, the writing, what other advice would you give to them as they prepare for these opportunities to make themselves stand out? Um, to make themselves stand out, I would again emphasize um, really working on speech. I think if you were to take some type of speech course or really, you know, focus on speech and your presentation skills when it's time for interviewing um, or just presenting anything, it's a certain confidence I think that comes across when you sharpen those types of skills um, that employers uh, will really look for because they want people that they know, okay, when I put them on this type of pedestal or environment, they're going to do well and they're going to shine for our, depart our department or our agency. And so I would just really emphasize um, really focusing on that confidence, that speech, presentation skills, because um, it's one thing to know the content. It's another thing to be able to convey it to the public. So that's what I would say. Thank you for those other excellent advice tips because we know that presentation sometimes is just a harder thing to do and especially in the situation we're in today is that we're having to do so much by the internet that it's an important part of what we do and it's just how life is. It sounds like that you really emphasize that they just need these good communication skills. So what opportunities might they even do to, I know a lot of our students sometimes are having a hard time finding the opportunity to do some service activities. So is there a way they might could even work on some of these communication skills by doing some volunteering through even Zoom or Microsoft Teams or Google Meets? that they could offer a service that they could help schools or maybe nursing homes or other things. Have you seen anything along those lines? I personally have not seen anything along those lines, but I definitely think that that is a great idea is if there was some type of avenue um, for students to really sharpen their skill sets via Zoom, um, Microsoft Teams or any other virtual platform during this time, I definitely think that that is essential um, in this time. And I'm sorry if you're seeing anything pop up on my screen, um, but I, I definitely think if there was something created that would, that would definitely serve um, a purpose. And I know for me personally, it, just as my other colleagues, if there were students who just needed some time to talk to somebody via Skype or Zoom or MS Teams to really focus on their presentation skills or how they communicate or come across, I know I would be more than available in other um, people. But as far as knowing something specifically, I don't at the moment. I definitely can look into that and report back to you all if I find something. Uh, but I definitely think that would serve um, as being beneficial. Yes, I, I know that we're having to get creative with these opportunities for our students because you can't just walk in somewhere and do the volunteering like you did at one point because even now we have a lot going on with COVID so we have to be yes. careful so thank you for being willing to research that out because I know that's a question I get from a lot of our students so no problem it, it is hard and I think it goes back to that creativity that you talked about we have to think of ways that we can build this rather than just do the status quo that we did before. Definitely. And like I, I said before, I think 
what I have seen most during this time is just the opportunity to be creative. Um, I think it's really allowed people to evaluate where they currently are um, and to see if they want to stay there, if they want to learn a new skill, if they want to obtain additional credentials or education and upskilling. So I just think overall um, industries as well as employees are learning really what's important to them, how to be creative um, and being flexible. So if, if I find anything um, that relates to students being able to really find that time in volunteering um, virtually or sharpening those skill sets, I will definitely relay that information to you all. Oh, we appreciate that so much. Can you touch a little bit about NC Works and explain that to our students and even any adults that might not really know what NC Works does as related to careers and how they help communities across the state? Definitely. So NC Works um, is it's run by the state of North Carolina. However, there are 23 local workforce development boards that um, run these services within your local areas. And so for students or even for um, job seekers, adult job seekers during this time, you could really um, look up your local workforce development board um, within your specific area. So I know for me, I live in Raleigh, um, the local workforce board in this area is Capital Area Workforce Development Board. And each of them have um, information for job seekers or students, youth that are looking, whether it be for interviewing skills, um, whether it be talking to a career counselor about your trajectory as um, an employee in a certain field, whether it be looking at different certifications that you may want to get, say you are interested in cybersecurity. Okay, well, a career advisor will meet with you to determine how do we get you on a career pathway that fits into cybersecurity if that's your end goal and that's what you want to do. And so NC work. Um, a comprehensive workforce development service administered um, to help the citizens of North Carolina. Um, they're all over and so you would just have to find your local workforce development board um, to see what you qualify for, what programs, um, just a, a range of different things. It's really for the citizens of North Carolina um, for workforce development, whether it be reskilling, upskilling, trying to go to a community college to obtain a degree, there are grants involved if you have certain barriers such as childcare, transportation, um, or anything, but we're just really here to help you be who, whatever you want to be, um, whether it be an entrepreneur, anything. Um, there's just a range of tools and resources that I don't think everybody knows about. I, we have a kind of running joke that it's a hidden gem in North Carolina, um, but actually it, you know, workforce development is in every state. They call it something different. And in North Carolina, we just call it NC Works. And so I can send this information to anybody who needs it, or if they want to get in touch with their local workforce development board to see, you know, what opportunities or resources they qualify for. I can send that out, just let me know, but we're just really here to help the citizens of North Carolina. Well, that's great information because I'll admit I'm not as familiar with it as I am some of the other resources. So thank you for clarifying that for us. No we problem. have another comment in the chat here. It says for students who are representative of marginal groups who are interested in going into this field of public policy, are there any specific programs or opportunities that they can participate in other than what you've mentioned? Um, okay, so I will say that um, there, it, it all depends. Um, so I could maybe offline um, match you up with what you're looking for. Um, but for me personally, so I am an African-American female and I went to a historically black college and university. And so for me, there was actually an HBCU internship program at the Department of Transportation to um, really focus on getting HBCU graduates within the public sector. And so that's kind of how I fell into the public sector through that specific program. And so that right now is the only thing that can come to mind because of course it's something that I was a participant in. Um, but there are other programs that serve as pipelines to um, get those interested students within the public sector, whether you are a minority, whether you are a woman or just a, a range of different things. Um, there are different programs and so 
maybe I can provide you with that information after this presentation. Um, if, if there's something more specifically that you're looking for. But for me personally, that's all that I can think of at this moment is there was that HBCU internship program that was really advocating and pushing minorities in higher education within the public sector. And that's how I got involved. Thank you for that wonderful example. And it says, yes, our HBCUs are important resources. That would be great. I'd love to hear more about these resources to pass them along to our students. So if you could provide a little bit more of that information, I believe is that College Foundation of North Carolina yep. has been doing some programs with HBCUs this past week. Mm -hmm. So College Foundation might be another resource that would be available also. Definitely, it definitely would be. Um, and I know in the long run, if you're looking to become a public administrator, there is a national forum from, for black public administrators um, that you know you can be a part of. There's many different resources and opportunities. There's conferences, of course, when that is available again, but I would also urge going to that website. Um, I'm trying to just think off the top of my head, but I'm sure I'll probably think of more once we get off of this presentation and can forward that information. Um, but at, at the moment, that's the only thing that I can think of at this time. No, I think those are excellent resources and we will try to get that information to you, Miss Barry McRae. If you'll send me your information, I will put my email in the chat here. I wanted to ask a little bit about your experiences with, with math. We talked a lot about communication skills, but mm -hmm. math is a very important part of doing research and research analysis. So are there any particular math classes that you would recommend students that wanted to go into research and be an analyst that they take? Definitely. So any course that deals with statistics, um, so whether that be an elementary statistics course, um, any type of statistics course, a research methods course, um, quantitative or qualitative analysis, those are really um, will lend itself to helping you look at the data, analyze the data, and make conclusions from the data and be able to report out um, from what you know just by looking at it. And so I would say anything with statistics, research methods, quantitative or qualitative analysis um, that will really help. I will also even say in your economics side of things, micro and macroeconomics are important as well. Um, Cause it really depends on as a public administrator, what specific um, area you wanna go in. So you may wanna go into the financial side of things. And so that's where that um, micro and macroeconomics course would come in handy um, there. Or if you wanna look at other things, I will just say overall, any type of statistics, research methods or quant or qualitative analysis course will definitely help. Those are great examples and, you know, it's just another example of how all this coursework works together for you to use it in a real world situation. So absolutely. And I will say with those courses, you will then though need to understand how to input that information. And so that's where Microsoft Excel comes in handy. So I know for me, um, even with my college education, while I was at NCDOT, I um, sought out some professional development activities that would help me um, in the long run. And so I got a Microsoft Excel certification levels one through three while I was at NCDOT. They paid for it and everything. And so those are other key ways where professional development can come in play um, when you are employed for somebody. And that's another great example as we have a lot of these Microsoft Office certifications available through our CTE departments throughout the state. And I know that NC Virtual also has this available. So it would be a great way for students to get this under their belts and to have that certification even coming out of high school. Absolutely. So, absolutely. I totally agree. 
And it's also a way to see if you enjoy this type of work. Yeah. So having those experiences is always a good idea. So thank you for sharing these wonderful examples and how that is something you use every day. And even though you didn't do it in your college coursework, you found in your work situation that was a needful area for you to excel. So thank you. Absolutely. Does anyone else have any questions before we finish up? Well, Miss Manley, it doesn't look like we have any more questions, but we thank you so much for these wonderful examples. It's always exciting to hear how people use their trainings, talents, and opportunities to move forward in their work process. And it's such a great way for our students to do career exploration. So thank you for taking this time to be with us today. Absolutely, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I'll just say again, I think public administrators are definitely needed in this time. Um, and so as things progress, I know another um, point and at least for me is I, I really want to find time and space to allow students to know that there are so many opportunities, whether it be at your state or local level in government. Um, and I think oftentimes there's some misconceptions, at least, you know, when I started working at DOT and I told people I work for the Department of Transportation, they automatically assumed I was an engineer. And so I think just really being able to show students that there are many different avenues, whether it be accounting, whether it be some investigative work with the inspector general's office, whether it be communications and graphic design that you're interested in, there is a place for you, whether it be at the state or local level of government. And so I know for me working at the state, that's another um, area that I strive to help shine light on so that students um, who are in situations like me who, who weren't aware will now know that there are opportunities for you. You just have to figure out what your area of expertise may be in. That's such a wonderful example because sometimes we forget about all these opportunities out there and then we're surprised by it later. So if we can get some of this information to our students as they're seeking their future career. It's just a great opportunity for them. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, we appreciate everyone that's come today and I have uh, enjoyed this session so much. I have put my email kim.loudermilk at ncpublicschools.gov. If you want to email me and give me your information, I will be glad to share that with Ms. Manley if you have some additional questions. And we just appreciate all of you taking time to come today. And Ms. Manley, we appreciate you taking your time to share your expertise and knowledge. So everyone have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.